Ciao ragazzi! This is Katie Portanova, and you're listening to Florence and Me. I'm a lover of stories and all things Italian, and I'm going to bring you all that in this podcast. My intention is to inspire you to step out of your comfort zone and explore life and travel the world. Join me as I tell you my story and many others about Italy and my love, Florence. Andiamo! Ciao a tutti! It is time for Florence and me. And more importantly, the focus on Florence. Yes? Oh yes, we're all excited. So today I'd like to focus on um, talking about the different neighborhoods in Florence, which I don't know if if you guys know there are neighborhoods in Florence. Unless you've lived there, um, you probably don't really know that there are neighborhoods. Um, so yeah, let's start off with that. So um, with my research, because of course I've done a little bit of research, but you guys know that I'm not going to give you dates. I'm probably going to give you ages, like the Middle Ages, the medieval times. No, I won't say that. But the Medici time, Middle Ages is basically the same. Um, We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, So if you have been to Florence, um, you will know this. But if you haven't, I would like all of you who haven't, if you're not driving and listening to this, to bring up a map of Florence. And if you look at a map of Florence, and I'm going to bring up my map while I talk to you, there is a, if you look at it in a way like a, it's kind of like a shape of a, the old town Florence is a shape of a hmm, kind of like a square, a little bit like a square of the neighborhoods. Um, and if you look at a map with, if you do pull up a map with the with the neighborhoods, you'll see what I'm talking about. The, the road that goes around those, I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's really just four neighborhoods, but the other two is kind of just the same. I, I want to call it... That's a lot. I'd never even thought of those two as neighborhoods. Anyway, um, around the neighborhoods and then across the river and up into where Boboli is and the Fortezza. And so you'll you'll see even Piazza Beccaria, Piazza Libertà, Piazza Donatello, uh, La Fortezza da Basso. They are, if you ever go around on those, on that, um, it would be called an avenue in the States, but because it's like six, four lanes, five lanes. Anyway, around the main city center, Centro Storico of Florence, you'll see these big towers. You'll see these big towers, especially in Piazza Beccaria, um, Piazza Libertà, and also on the other side of uh, this train station, there's Porta Prato. And these all doors, if you all look at, um, and if you, again, if you've been to Florence, you know what I'm talking about. In San Feriano, there's Porta di San Feriano, there's Porta Romana, there's, um, uh, no, there's nothing over in San Nicolo. Anyway, so there were basically, there was basically a wall around that part, that, that Florence at that time, if that makes sense. Um, and what was left was the porte, the doors, the doors to the city. And, um, just like how I learned in Castiglione Fiorentino, they, they, they all had porte, portes anche, also, sorry, (laughs) porte. They all had doors as well. And they all pointed in the direction of cities. So in Castiglione Fiorentino, there was Porta Fiorentina, Porta Romana, Porta... And Chelsea, if she was here, she'd know all of them, but I don't remember them. But they all had names of where the direction of where they were facing. If it was to Roma, Porto Romana, just like in Florence, there's Porto Romana. It's facing towards Rome. 
And um, what was the other one? Piazza Libertà. I don't know the origin. Porta Prato is is facing towards Prato. Is what I'm what is what I would consider. And also Prato in Italian means um like grassy knoll. So before there was um actually Porta Prato looks right at uh park. Parco delle Cascine is a big park. So that makes sense. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so yeah. So I- imagine back in medieval and middle ages when the Medici were ruling Florence, they had walls, big walls to protect them. And you could see, you can see some of the walls still. If you, you know, maybe you had a hotel um up on top of um, near Piazza Le Michelangelo so up in there like Villa Cora like all those really really rich I would love to go to some of those places really nice hotels you would have gone along the wall near Santo Spirito San Feriano and passed through the piazza which is um Porta Romana and you can still see the wall especially in Porta Romana because there's just two doors one in one out and now it's one ways because obviously <laughs> Even though streets are small in Italy, the cars are small, but not all of them, especially the buses, they don't, they can't get any smaller as they are. Um, so yeah, so it's really interesting to see um, when you look at a map, you can actually, and then when you go there, you can see the, the, the actual walls or the actual porte, the, port, uh, the doors to the city. And there's also Porta San Gallo, I think. Is that just via Sangal? Ah, I'm just I'm spitballing here, guys. Um, so anyway, if you're looking at a map still, if you're not, just imagine the map. I'm sure it's in your head. If you love Florence, you're listening to me, you probably know. Um, if you look at the city center, which is on my particular map, it just says Duomo Centro Storico. That is even before the Medici. Um came into power or even were born so that was the city center and that was it outside of where santa croce is where san marco is and and san lorenzo san feriano that wasn't that didn't even exist like this is like charlemagne time like before christ okay i'm talking way back when because my favorite church, Santi Apostoli, is inside that original Centro Storico. Eh? Eh, okay? And Charlemagne is written on the side of that church. Um, again, we don't have the, the right documents. There's not actual knowledge. It's just, you have, there's a plaque that's outside of my, my church saying that Charlemagne was here or he cre- he... He built this. And so I, again, again, I'm not, you know me, <laughs> I don't have all my facts completely straight, but you know how much I love Florence. I just know Charlemagne was part of my church. So, um, so yeah, so the Duomo, uh, the Duomo in the Centro Storico, like that was the edge of the main city center. So just imagine, again, if you're not, if you're driving, please don't look at your phone. Um, just imagine outside of those walls, like um, Piazza della Repubblica, you can see, you know, that was, that became, that was built after, obviously, all that, because Piazza Repubblica was called something completely different um, before, uh, during this time that I'm talking about, you know, the time of Charlemagne. So, but this, this, um, there were walls. So if you, if you guys ever go to, um, and search on Instagram. There are a really awesome, um, there's a few um, handles that talk about Firenze prima e dopo. And they do these like videos of like of the street, like for example, Piazza del Duomo, and then they, they fade in to what it used to look like or what it looks like now. Like it's really cool to see like just how much the city has changed over, you know, centuries. Um, and uh, where was I going to go with that? Oh, yeah. So imagine outside of the Centro Storico where the Duomo is, um, in the, right in the city center, um, and Plazzo Vecchio, like that was all in the city center, okay? Outside of that were walls, okay? And outside of that 
was just farmland. Like just farmland. Far as the eye can see. There was no train station. There was no um, football stadium. There was no buses. There's nothing. It was all, you know, donkeys and cows and, and livestock. And, and if you listen to my um, my podcast episode, it was probably one of the first of Orsa Michele, which is one of the churches inside Centro Storico, inside where the Duomo is. That, that church has been there since Charlemagne, okay? There, there, it has changed into totally different things from a granary, from a... Um, it was a market for a while, and then it became a church to honor um, Michele, San Michele. Uh, anyway, you can listen to that episode. I won't get into that. Um, okay, so I pit- you pictured it, yes? Okay, so now we're going to start to talk about each neighborhood. And again, if you are new to Florence, bear with me, okay? Again, if you are able to look at a map, great. If you're not, you can look at a map after this or li- re-listen to it another time. So... We'll start with the Duomo. Okay, so the Duomo Centro Storico. Okay, this is the area of Florence that if you visited as a tourist or you studied abroad, you probably know this like the back of your hand. Or like some of the students I studied with, they never understood the streets in in Florence, which for me, it became like, I I feel like I could have tattooed it on my hand because I knew all the streets by heart. Um, this is where you'd find um, the Uffizi, the Academia, to see the, uh, the David, the Michelangelo, I was going to say. Um, Palazzo Vecchio, the Uffizi is next to it. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, it's a lot of touristy places. So if you are looking for something authentic and something more, um, for example, um, restaurant-wise, I wouldn't suggest eating in the Centro Storico, if you are on a budget, okay? If you're not on a budget and you're like, I want to spend all my money, okay, then you go for it. There are some places that are very unique. In Piazza Repubblica, they have beautiful cafes and um, just th- that have been there forever and like have a beautiful history. So some of those, like, I would recommend going to if you want more details on that. I could also do another podcast episode on those. Um, but yeah, that's another story on those. So yeah, so there's the Duomo in there. So everyone wants to go to the Duomo. The Duomo is free to enter. Um, I think, um, obviously during the pandemic, it was probably rationed, like how many people could enter and keep in mind, um, Italy as a whole going forward, uh, regarding tourism, and I, I hope they continue to, I hope they actually do this. This is only from my source who is part of um, Italia Turis, tu, Turismo. Like she's she's a big tour guide in Torino and she's she's with the, the um, uh, she knows about the government's, the government agency, the tourist agency. I'm, I'm not even speaking good today, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but she's told me and I took her courses through the pandemic, she told me, you know, your, your retreats, your, um, your travel, if you plan on traveling with a lot of people, or if you travel on, plan on going with a big, um, van or bus, that's not going to be really feasible after the pandemic because Italians are very, um, I mean, they're still wearing masks inside as opposed to us, at least I'm outside of Chicago you know, masks are now all optional wherever you go. So they're very, very rigid when it comes to, they, they were very rigid when it comes to the vaccine cards all over the, all over the country. So I think um, just keep in mind if you plan, you're like, hey, maybe you're planning on coming with some friends and you want to go with your cruise ship and you want to take a bus from Livorno to Florence. I would just not, I would not do that. I would, I would, I would hire a travel agent or tra- a travel agent, a travel guide, uh, a tour guide to take you privately through the city because it is going to be hard to get into these really amazing um, historical landmarks like the museums and the landmarks and the churches and stuff. So that's just a little tidbit for you guys planning your next trip to Florence, like trip to Italy. Um, keep that in mind. Uh, so, okay. So the Duomo, yes. Area around the Duomo, a lot of souvenir shops. A lot of expensive shops, a lot of, you'll see Burberry, Prada, Gucci, Via Tornabuoni is on that. 
in that um is it oh maybe it's not mm. oh it's on the other side but yeah it's close yeah via tuona boni is the it's on the it's on the edge so um via tuona boni uh, briefly is the is the most expensive street in florence um it has all the um big uh <sighs> brands uh that i can't afford you have you have a um security guard at each door and uh yeah so if you if you want to walk down it it's beautiful because it's all pedestrian and it's beautiful the only cars that go through especially most of the city center good also thing to note also the city center, only taxis really go through there and the tiny little c buses and i mean the c is the letter c um there's no other um, cars that can enter unless you're a resident, which, you know, usually it's rich people. Um, you'll see their Teslas or their big stretch limousines. Um, but yeah. So, but it's really cool to see. So all of that um, in there. And then, of course, the Ponte Vecchio is everyone's favorite to walk down, take pictures on, look inside the, you know, the the gold and silver shops that are on there. That's just, it's a, it's something to see. And to think about... All of the bridges, all of them except Ponte Vecchio, was bomb, were bombed during World War II. So it's it's a treasured um, uh, bridge. So yeah, I'd recommend um, walking down that too. Um, since we just walked over the Ponte Vecchio, let's go into um, the region of where Palazzo Pitti is, which my map is telling me it's like Santo Spirito San Feriano. Let's go with that, Okay. <laughs> I mean, I would call it like, I would call it Oltrano. Oltrano means on the other side of the river, basically. Other side of the Arno, the Arno River. So that's usually what this area is called. San Feriano, Santo Spirito, San Nicolo. And they're all named after just um, churches, mostly. San Feriano, there's a church. Santo Spirito, there's a church. San, San Nicolo, there is probably a church, but I don't really remember where it could be. It could be the San Nicolo Tower, which again was part of um, the wall, the old wall. So you could see that um, if you walk over there. So if we walk down the main drag from uh, Ponte Vecchio, you'll still find a lot of souvenir shops, a lot of ritzy shops. So um, Borgo San Jacopo, which is when you come off the Ponte Vecchio to your right, there's a lot of restaurants and a lot of really nice shops. Like nice shops that I can afford, but I don't want to spend the money, I'll be honest. But a really cool place. Like some some places look off onto the river. Um, yeah, so that's always a fun thing. And then to your left, there's more restaurants, more shops, a lot more restaurants, I'll say. And um, gelaterie. And there's also a supermarket right there. Um facing the river um if you ever needed like some you know snacks or something um okay so going forward i will say i will tell you some places that i remember specifically where they are i do know of a lot of restaurants and a lot of um well bars i used to but i'm sure they all have gone into different hands because i haven't been there in a while um the the restaurant Slash Enoteca. I wouldn't call it really a restaurant. It's more of like an afternoon snack area if you want to have some wine and some crostini, some cheese, some, you know, salami, prosciutto, that type of stuff. When you keep walking and you're you're walking towards the Palazzo Pitti, and that's where everybody's walking. You're just going straight from the Ponte Vecchio and just follow the traffic. Um... If you stay on the left-hand side of the street, so stay on the left-hand side where the where the sidewalk is, marciapiede is what sidewalk is in Italian. I'm going to just poke in some Italian words in there for you, marciapiede. Um, there is a place called Le Volpe e le Uva. Le Volpe e le Uva. And it means the fox and the grape. So, and it's very small. But it's so good. And the people there are always so nice. Of course, they speak English. I know everyone asks me that. Um, you can't go wrong any of the places near the city center. In any of these neighborhoods, somebody speaks English. So don't ever feel bad that you don't speak Italian. Give it a try. I recommend trying to speak Italian and trying to order in Italian. 
And if they cut you off, it's fine. Whatever. At least you tried. That's what I tell everybody when they go. And after you have that little glass of wine and um, crostini, you can walk further past, um, keep going towards um, Palazzo Pitti. Now, Palazzo Pitti was the house of the Medici. If you notice, and when you do do this, um, when you do go there, or if you've been there, you'll notice that there's a corridor that follows you um, from P- Ponte Vecchio. If you look at, there's these tiny little windows if you look up. And it goes up and it goes up and then it keeps going straight across. After you ate at Le Vope um, Eluva, you'll see a church like right next to that place. And it's called Santa Felicita. And that corridor, which is called Corridorio Vasari, v- Vasa- v- pff, Vasario, it's the Vasari Corridor in English, um, created by Giorgio Vasari. Vasari. Um, that was the corridor that the rich Medici walked from their residence, from Palazzo Pitti to Lufizzi. Uffizi in English, means the offices. Now it's a, now it's a, an art museum, but that's where they had their offices, and the Palazzo Vecchio was where they did their business. Huh? Huh? Did you guys know that? No? I didn't, re- I didn't understand it until a few times after I started, I started living there a little bit longer, and I'm like, oh, I thought both of those were their houses. No, the Palazzo Pitti was their house. And then Boboli Gardens is right behind it, Guys, these people had so much property. And then if you knew, if you know that there are many um, old Medici villas outside of the city center, like in the hills and stuff, there are so many. These people had so much power during their time and their reign that, I mean, it's incredible. And if you've been to Bobley Gardens, you know what I'm talking about. Like, I mean, you can get lost there. It's beautiful. I just imagine people walking in their beautiful garb and like, you know, having parties and like just it, it just it's amazing. I still get it all like like all flustered about it because it's just so cool. Like Palazzo Pitti is really cool to see if you wanted to go in and visit. But mostly it's art. I'll be honest. It's just like um the Uffizi. But uh, you see the rooms and stuff, but it, you know, there's a, I mean, there's some furniture, I think I remember, but I wasn't too impressed because I'm not, I'm not wholly like, I need to see all the art. I like a specific artist and, and I did see him in the Uffizi, but I, I couldn't, I'm not like all day long in the Vatican, like Vaticano, if I go there and I see the Sistine Chapel, all oh, right, uh, we saw it, great. <laughs> but it's cool to see, obviously, it's, it's something to see. Uh, Palazzo Pitti is more like that. I feel like the Boboli Gardens is, um, I think it is more, especially in the summer, it's just beautiful. Because from one of the, uh, when, you, when you come up the stairs from the bottom, from when you come in and you pay your ticket and stuff, you come into the main like um, courtyard and then you walk up some stairs and then you're at this beautiful view. You see all these trees and all this like beautiful landscaping. And then you turn to your left and there's the Duomo and there's Florence. Like these, this is what they're, they lived here. It's amazing. It's amazing. So I recommend that. I recommend that um, mostly Bobbly Gardens, Palazzo, Palazzo Pitti, if you, if you're really into art. Um, yeah, I'd go there. And I will do a shout out as you walk out of Palazzo Pitti. I have a friend's um, tea shop. So if you like, um, uh, what's it called? Not tea bags, but loose tea. Loose leaf tea. At the edge of uh, Piazza Pitti, which is the big piazza, which you can't miss it. Um, going towards Porto Romana. So you're still going straight. The Ponte Vecchio is behind you. It's called Oro Loro Nero. Uh, black gold is what it translates to. And there's two amazing women that work there. Of course, I forget their names right now. But if you want tea, you want really good tea, go there. Okay? It's delicious. If you keep walking down and I... Gosh, I don't even remember the name of that street. I'm going to pull up my map here. Hold on. Because um, the... Hold on. Okay, here's Palazzo Pitti. Allora. 
Oh, the bubbly garden. Sorry, I'm just now... <laughs> I'm looking at my old... Um, oh, Via Romana. It's called Via Romana because it goes Porto Romana, okay? If you keep going on Via Romana and there's like a fork in the road that goes one road if you take um, a road going towards... Um, eh, um, Santo Spirito. And then there's another road that just keeps going south. And that's the road that you would take to get to my friend um maria right yeah maria pache her name is maria pache and she's a beautiful beautiful designer if you are looking for authentic italian design go to her tiny shop it's a tiny shop it's not it's not that tiny anymore but it's beautiful i have bought so many different clothes from her because i wanted to support her and support small business and that's basically a big part of what truly italy is um truly italy is if that made sense um, supporting a lot of small businesses. So Maria Pache is the name of her um, designer shop. If you like clothes, <laughs> shoes, belts, purses, she does it all. She does it all. And then if you keep going down Via Romana, there are some shops down there. Not that I remember like anything of note. There's a lot of residential. There's a lot of apartments. Um, and then you get to Porto Romana. Okay. We'll go back towards Palazzo Pitti, okay? And then you come over to, instead of going straight down Via Romana, you go um, to your right, and you can't miss it. You'll find um, Piazza Santo Spirito. Now, Piazza Santo Spirito, full of restaurants, good restaurants. It's a place, if you ever plan on staying in this area, be, be warned that this is an area for a lot of young people. To smoke some hash, you know, drink a lot. They're loud in the piazza. Just so you know. I wouldn't recommend staying here if you are an older couple or if you would like to sleep. Because it's a quite it's a quite um lively um after hours place to like hang out in the piazza. And um going over to San Frediano. San Frediano, um there are restaurants there. It's not as big and hip as um, a Santo Spirito, but there are some restaurants. There's Brancacci Chapel in Piazza San Friano. I think Piazza San Friano, Piazza, Piazza, I'm going to get this wrong. I was trying to do it from memory, guys. Oh, I'm not going to get it. We have La Scala. No, that's the other side. Hold on. Let me see if I can find my, my street. If not, it's okay. Anyway, Brancacci Chapel is one of the chapels I went to when I was a student, when I studied abroad. I'll never forget it because my, my teacher, Vera, told us how important that that um, the fresco was in there. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba, I'm not going to find it. Santoriano. Oh, Piazza del Carmine. Yeah, it was wrong. I knew it, was, I knew, I knew it wasn't Piazza San Feriano. Um Piazza del Carmine has a couple restaurants in there. It's it's really um I think there was a club in there at one point. Of course I didn't go to it. I wasn't really into clubs. Um let's see. But yeah, any any places near Santo Spirito, Via di Santo Spirito, there's some restaurants, really good restaurants. Uh I used to live on Via Mafia, the Mafia, Mafia Street. I remember that. I lived with two Dutch guys. It was very strange. They were nice. Strange. I only stayed there like a month or so, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so Piazza del Carmine has Brancacci, Brancacci Chapel. It's um, it's really cool. Uh, I could get I could get more into that, but I'm not going to get into it right now. But it's a really cool um fresco by um Gio Giotto. Oh God, I could be totally wrong. I'm sorry. I'm totally, I'm totally ruining my um. If Vera was still alive, she'd be like, Katie. <laughs> You didn't remember? No, I don't, I don't remember, Vera. I'm sorry. It's been 20 years. Um, okay. So we're still on the Oltrano. So, Oltr I can't even say it. I have trouble with my R's, guys. I was in speech therapy when I was in grade school. I'll be honest, okay? Um, and I'm aware of it. I'm okay with it. Uh, let's see. San, San Nicolo, another very hip area. So again, if you're staying maybe near... Uh, Piazza Ferrucci, which is around the other side of, um, towards um, the right side of San Nicolo. It's another type of neighborhood. Piazza Ferrucci is, um, 
has a lot of hotels along that street going up towards Piazzale Michelangelo. Um, San Nicolo is quite hip too. There's some there's some clubs, there's some um, bars, anotecas. Uh, yeah, it's fun. I think it's fun. Um, let's see. From San Nicolo, there's Piazzale Michelangelo, but we'll talk about that another time. I don't want to talk about it right now. Let's go back over to the other side. Um, so those are the two neighborhoods on on the other side of the river. Let's go to Santa Croce. Santa Croce is a beautiful church. Yes, Piazza Santa Croce is where they have the um, Calcio Storico, um, which if you guys are aware of what happens usually, yep, end of the end of July, 24, the 24th of June. I said July. Um, they have um, the match. So it's between the four neighborhoods. So it's white. Huh, I'm going to get this wrong. Blue is Santa Croce. White is Santo Spirito. E Duomo is red. Santa Maria Novella. No, Santa Maria Novella is red. Duomo is... I'm Okay, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. Calcio... Calcio Storico Florence. Okay. Quartiere. Yes, okay, I was close. Okay, Santo Spirito is... Santa Spirito is white. Santa Maravella is red. San Giovanni is the Duomo area. And Santa Croce is, is blue. And it's between those four neighborhoods. And if you look up those quartieres or neighborhoods, um, you can see how they were broken up back when they first started this match. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, um, it's not as c- cut and dry. It's a little gerrymandering a little bit. <laughs> Like it's not, it's, there's a little bit of Giovanni in Santa Maria Novella. Um, yeah, so they, they do their, um, really violent soccer game, which is not technically soccer. It's a, it's a mix between rugby and soccer and, and rugby in the worst kind, like people losing ears, people losing eyes, broken bones, broken everything. It's, it's really, it's really vulgar to see, but it's something very that Florentines are so proud of. Like they love the the whole procession of it. It's something to see if you're ever here and the 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 procession. I mean, ask your hotel, ask your Airbnb. Like if it's happening, you need to go to the street and look and watch them. They they're so proud. They're such a proud people when it comes to that. Um, yeah. So Santa Croce. Let me see what else. The church is beautiful. There is a um, leather shop in the back of that church. Um, I think you can visit that as well. I remember visiting parts of it. Um, There's a beautiful baptistry. Uh, There's a lot of restaurants again. This is another, we're still in the city center, so you're going to pay a lot for probably mediocre food at at times. It's important to look at uh, reviews. It's very important. Wherever, I'm sure you guys do this. I'm sure you... You when you go places, you check reviews. It's more important to look at instead of looking at the price, look at the reviews. I know you don't want to spend a lot of money, and I know you're converting euro into dollars. And like, I I, I implore you to try and taste really good food, even if it's a little expensive, or even if it's not very expensive, because there are some hidden places in the Santa Maria Novella area that no, t- not a lot of tourists know about because a lot of locals go there um, because it costs like nothing and it's really good food, like really simple recipes, simple food. Um, let's see, what else in Santa Croce? Oh, Santa Croce is very interesting in that area. If you look, if you're looking, um, let's see, if you're in the piazza, Piazza Santa Croce, okay? You're in the piazza and you're looking, the, the, the church is at your back, okay? And you're looking towards, um, there's a few buildings. You're not going to be able to really see it unless you walk into it. Um, let me get my map up here. There is a, it's, it's this is so cool when I get it up, when I figure out how to tell you and explain it. <laughs> um, because before um, modern day, Florence like before we built up and there's all these other buildings on top there actually used to be a um, forum near Piazza Santa Croce 
There is a part, there's a street that I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to see. Let's see if I can see it. Ah, I can't see it on this, on this map. But if you look, if you're looking at Piazza, looking toward, toward, away from Piazza um, Santa Croce, there is a street called Borgo de Grecia, at Greci, and you and you'll know this because it's one of the main streets that lead to Piazza Santa Croce. You can't miss it. So there's a road that goes around, and if you follow the road around, you can look at the 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 buildings, and you'll see it as it as it, it's like um, it's round like a circle as you go around. It's only half of it; it doesn't go all the way around, but. Part of it, it's Via Torta, Via Torta, and Via Torta, and I can't read that other street name. Via de Stinke, yeah, and that's where another Vivoli, the famous gelateria, is there. Uh, Via Torta, yeah. Anyway, that used to be a Roman forum. Kid you not. But they kept the buildings as it were. Cool, right? I know, nobody, nobody really notices it unless somebody tells you. You won't notice it until somebody tells you. Um... On the other side of Santa Croce, towards the river, there's the Biblioteca Nazionale. And that, that was a place during the 1966 flood, was a very important place to go to to help, um, where they called the Mud Angels came. Um, people from all over the world, all over Florence came to help dry out all the important books and documents Um, That the flood basically ate (laughs) with all of its fury. Um, But that's, I've never been inside. People tell me how beautiful it is. I've never been inside. You have to have like a, I think you have to have a membership or something, member card or something. I don't know. I don't, I never had to go inside. But it could be something that you could go inside for. I don't know. That's something to to think about. Um, Let's see. From there, we can head back towards Piazza Signoria. Which is one of my favorite piazzas, and I know I probably said this numerous times on on the podcast. Piazza Signoria is my most favorite piazza. It's the one I fell in love with Florence. It's like me. It's imagine me. No, sorry. Imagine Julie Andrews at the top of that mountain in the beginning of Sound of Music. That is what I felt like when I walked into this piazza. I knew I was home. Subito. Right away. And I did not sing the song. But I did spin around. <laughs> uh, the hills are alive with the sound of Italian. <laughs> um, and, and, and wine, of course. Um, in this piazza, there are um, some restaurants, some expensive restaurants, some very um, touristy restaurants, and some very historic restaurants, like Riviere, Riviere. I can't remember how to pronounce it. It's facing Plazzo Vecchio, very expensive. Um, and if you didn't know this, sitting down in a cafe that's in a piazza, like Piazza Repubblica or Piazza Signoria, you are going to pay double for that tiny little coffee and that tiny little beignet. FYI. That's why everybody goes to the banco, everyone goes to the counter, and they order, drink, and they leave. Okay. There's also a new, I just saw, on the corner of the piazza... Um, on the side, on, if you're looking at the, at the Palazzo Vecchio, on the left side, there's a new Gucci restaurant or museum. I think it's a museum. And then there's a restaurant called Gucci 25, Gucci 25. It, it, um, they renovated an old flower shop that has been there for a years, millions of years, probably not millions, but years. And they turned it into this boutique, um, uh, wine bar slash aperitivo slash restaurant i think i have i, I imagine it's expensive <laughs> it's on piazza Ripata, piazza Zaneria. and next to that place uh giardino 25 it is um frescobaldi uh restaurant where i used to go my friend kelly if she ever listens to this used to work there when it was called lorenzaccio so frescobaldi you might know the wine it is a big name in Florence. It's a big name in a lot of places. And they, I can't wait to see that restaurant because they renovated it completely when I saw it in January. I just looked through the window. Looked awesome. Anyway, moving on. 
because I'm I digress because <laughs> I could say all day in Piazza Signoria because I love it so much. We are going to move up through Via de Cazzaioli. And that is the main drag going from Piazza Signoria to Piazza del Duomo, where the Duomo is. Now, this has everything. Everything. You know, they used to have the Disney store. I don't think it's there anywhere. There used to be Foot Locker. I, I'm not kidding. Foot Locker. Um, there used to be a department store called Coin. Beautiful. I keep talking about the things that used to be there. Sorry. What's there now is a lot of shops for underwear, shoes, clothes. Not so much like Via Tono Buoni, like full of Prada, Burberry, and all the other stuff. It's more for the average Joe, okay, like myself. Um, there's some cafes. There's, um, yeah, it's cool stuff, you know, why not? It's a, it's a beautiful walk, especially at night. If you're staying anywhere in the city center, that is a great walk at night because the lights and everything, oh, it's beautiful. Um, from there, okay, so we already were in Duomo. Let's go into Santa Maria Novella. Okay, in that area, in that neighborhood, Piazza Santa Maria Novella is right, is the ch- piazza where the church is, but right behind it is where the train station is. And you you probably know this because that's what the station's called, Santa Maria Novella. So um, this area, in my opinion, okay, I lived here for many years. This area is a little dodgy, okay? Not saying that I wouldn't stay there again, like I wouldn't live there. But if you're a tourist, it's a little bit on, I don't want to be rude, but there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of immigrants that live on this side of the, of the, of the historic center. Again, Nothing scary. I'm just saying there's a lot of Indian restaurants. There's a lot of um, Indian um, grocery stores everywhere. Actually, there's not it's not just here, but um, there's a lot of pubs. My friend's pub used to be on Via de la Scala. He just doesn't own it anymore. Joshua Tree was on that street. And another um, pub is on Via Palazzuolo. And Borgoni Santi, when you come into Borgoni Santi, getting closer to the river, there's nicer places. So it's not that bad. But I wouldn't stay in that area because there's not really a lot to see. It's a lot of residential. There's some churches, but it's not and restaurants and stuff. It's mostly if you were, say, an Airbnb. I'm saying that's probably where you're going to stay. Let's see. And if you're American... The American consulate is on the river, and it's a really pretty building, but I wouldn't go too close because there's guard, guard, it's guarded, like, really bad, really strongly. Um, so, on via Amerigo Vespucci, which is funny because that's the name of the airport, which is the name of the guy who they say cre- um, founded America, Amerigo. Uh, funny little tidbit. Also, my father-in-law's name was Almerico. Uh Similar, no? A little bit. Let's see. From Santa Maria Novella, it is a nice area. I'm going to put it out there once more. Okay. (laughs) It's not bad. Um, Let's go up to San Marco. Now, San Marco, Piazza San Marco, is where all the buses meet. Yes. So you probably stop in Piazza San Marco. If you take the train, if you, from the train station, you get on a bus and you get to San Marco, you might have to switch buses. Okay. Let's say you're going up to Fiesole. Um, the number seven bus used to go all the way to the station. Now it stops at Piazza San Marco. They really try to, um, which is great. They really tried to eliminate a lot of the, um, the traffic by stopping certain lines, sh- like shorter distance from not everybody has not every bus has to go to san um the state the station so yeah so piazza san marco there's a beautiful church there too really cool to see in there um and then all up and going towards piazza libertà this is where we get to a lot of residential a lot of businesses a lot of universities are up in here like gonzaga there's um Gonzaga, no, Gonzaga is in Piazza San Vararola. Uh, there is the Four Seasons, a big hotel near um, uh, Santissima Annunziata. Piazza Santissima uh, Annunziata. Cazzo! <laughs> Can't speak today. 
Um, but there's a lot of universities here. I'm just going to leave it there. There's, um, I want to say there was Gonzaga. There was another one. There's so you, there's a lot of American universities in Florence and you, and you would never know that they're there because they're in these ancient buildings. So, um, okay, let's see from there, we are going to move on to the next neighborhood, which was, let's see, Santa Maria Novella. We talked about San Marco, San Lorenzo. Ah, San Lorenzo. San Lorenzo is where Mercato Centrale now is a hip, awesome place. I have been there twice now and I love it. I love it. I love it. They have really good food. You, It's like a food truck in a market. It's it's awesome. So I recommend going there for sure. Below during the day, they have the actual market with the cheeses and the meats and the prosciutto. Upstairs at night, it, it's open to like midnight. There's there's bars, there's food. It's just it's it's awesome to see, guys. So I would recommend going there. San Lorenzo is also an area that's a little sketchy. There's a there's a lot more immigrants there as well. Um, there's some r- streets that I wouldn't go down alone. Um, but yeah, overall, like during the day, it's great. Like there's a beautiful San Lorenzo church is beautiful. I recommend going there. There's the Medici chapel right behind there. So that's where Lorenzo Cosimo and what was the other, um, Giovanni? No, there's another brother. They're all buried there. And Michelangelo created their, um, their tombs. So it's really cool to see. It's really, it's really cool. It's not eerie or creepy at all. <laughs> as much it's like they're crypt um yeah and then Annunziata I already talked about so the Four Seasons is over there there's some universities over here um and then Sant'Ambrogio is a very a lesser known area lesser known neighborhood for newcomers to Italy newcomers to Florence I under I learned more about it when I started living there more actually when I moved there in 2008 for three months and then I came back in 2009 that was it's it's another very hip place there's a lot of restaurants a lot of really cool shops um and that that Piazza Beccaria is right at the edge of Sant'Ambrogio there's um another there's a Mercato Sant'Ambrogio so during the day it's open all around that Mercato it's a building there's um fresh vegetables and all different types of vendors um open air market type thing inside Mercato Sant'Ambrogio uh, is um there's a lot of restaurants and that's really good too what's really a little known fact about that place so I went there a few times but I went there once with my friend Simone which I've talked about um a long time ago and we went to a place where it said Daniel Day Lewis used to eat here every single day when he was preparing for um, he was preparing for a role. He, he was a, 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 a shoemaker for like a year in Florence, like incognito. Did you know that? I don't think you did, but that was really cool. I did not, I did not know that. I didn't know he was there. It was right before he filmed Gangs of New York. If that puts into perspective for you, I don't, I don't know what movie that was before he did that. Um, yeah. So, and Piazza del Deo is the other neighborhood I see here, um, which is, a, it's not even a neighborhood, it's a, it's a piazza. Um, again, that's just like a ritzy area. There's a park in Piazza D'Azeglio with like, um, eh, like swing sets and stuff like that. Um, if you have kids, you know, that's some place to go. Yeah, so that's all the neighborhoods, guys. God, I've talked for about 50 minutes already. Um, as you can tell, I cannot stop talking about Florence. There's so much to say. I hope this has helped you um, kind of understand the the different neighborhoods of in Florence, um, maybe places to stay, um, like areas to stay, not places because I didn't tell you any hotels that I know of. Um, but I mean, if you're if you're more like I'm okay with my I'm I'm financially stable, I would stay in the Centro Storico, like right near the Duomo. Um, everything's there. Everything's within walking distance. Um, and you just have to walk to the train station if you're going on a day trip to Pisa or Assisi. Um, Santa Croce is really nice too. There's a lot of hotels and B&Bs. Um, B&Bs are really big right now and Airbnbs are really big. So yeah, I mean, those are really great areas to stay. San Nicolo is a great place to stay. It's pretty quiet. Um, if you stay up more towards, um, 
Piazzale Michelangelo, you stay in the nice ritzy hotels like Villa Cora or um, I keep thinking of Villa Cora because I looked up that place for my sister's wedding. It is gorgeous, but very expensive for a wedding and probably to say <laughs> because it looks over Florence. And uh, yeah, anyway, I'm di- I digress. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I'm just going to put a couple plugs in here. So I still have my virtual wine tasting happening on May 15th at 1130 Central Standard Time. If you're at all interested, I'm leaving a link in my notes here, my podcast notes um, to sign up. And then I'll send you a email with a pay link. It's $159 per device. Okay, this is like so worth it. You get three bottles of wine shipped to your home. And a week before, I'm going to send you three recipes. If you like if you like to cook, you can make the recipes to pair with the wines. Sound like a fabulous idea, doesn't it? Yes, it does, right? I'm waiting for somebody to answer. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I do have, um, I still am having this retreat in June. Uh, <laughs> 4th through the 11th in Campo Sevoli in uh, southern Tuscany. If there's anybody out there, I'm offering it at a reduced rate. I just want to hold one. Pretty, pretty please. Um, If that's not your bag, if you'd like, I have a September retreat coming up as well. And that's going to be actually right next door to my mother-in-law in in Castel Fiorentino. It's about 40 minutes from Florence. I have a lot of awesome vineyards planned, um, wine tastings, um, visits to little towns, and pizza party cooking class a lot of fun stuff and we have a house for it's five bedrooms three baths and there's a pool and we're in the middle of the tuscan hills what more can you ask for it's very peaceful very quiet and it's beautiful so if that's your bag um email me truly italy tours at gmail.com go to my website you can fill out that contact me and I will get back to you with all the deets. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else to uh, plug. I hope you have a fantabulous day. A buona giornata, buona serata, buona notte, wherever you are in the world. And a presto. Ciao. I am beyond grateful for you listening to my podcast right now. I am so excited to share my journey of living abroad and all my stories of Florence and Italy and all the places in between that I've visited. If this has reached you in any way and you would like to continue, please subscribe now. Also, go check out my website, trulyitaly.tours, for all my travel experiences. Ci si vede. Ciao.